According to a poll I put up on the YouTube community section last week, 32% of you bleed your own brakes. 21% of you have a shop bleed your brakes, and I can't blame you. There's no shortage of reasons to let someone else do it, especially if you live in an apartment. As for the remaining 46% of you, it's not about the know-how, the tools, or the mess. You just don't know what the freak a brake bleed is, plain and simple. Even today's most basic mountain bikes have disc brakes. Some use cables, while others use hoses filled with oil. Hydraulic brakes are powerful and accurate, which is why cars and motorcycles have utilized them for the better part of a century. The hydraulic brakes on a bike consist of a lever, a hose, and a caliper. This closed system is filled with oil, so when you pull your lever, the oil is displaced, forcing the pistons in your caliper to squeeze your rotor. But why are these systems filled with oil? Why not a gas like air? Well, air compresses easily, which is why it's ideal for suspension forks. Filling a fork with air ensures it will move when you hit a bump. But if we were to fill your fork's air chamber with oil or some other liquid, it would feel completely rigid. As for cable actuated brakes, they work fine, but there's friction between the cable and the housing, in addition to some bending and stretching. This results in energy loss that hydraulic systems are able to overcome. But hydraulic brakes are prone to wear and contamination. Air can make its way around the seals and become part of the system. Air in the system makes the lever feel spongy and reduces the effectiveness of the brakes. A brake service can involve flushing the system and replacing old oil, but more often it just involves getting the air bubbles out. This process is called a bleed. But why? Why not a fart? We are, after all, trying to get the air out. Good question. The term originated in auto shops where some procedures involve letting a bit of oil drip from the caliper, hence the term bleed. But on a bike, the procedure can vary greatly depending on the brand and model. Each model of brake requires a different set of tools, different oil, and a unique set of steps. This is why most manufacturers include detailed tutorials on their YouTube channels. Detailed as they are, these tutorials assume a base level of understanding that a bike mechanic or enthusiast would have. Otherwise, you don't know what the freak they're talking about. Today, that's going to change. We're going to build a transparent model so you can see how a bleed works. The system uses a lever and caliper made from syringes connected together with clear aquarium tubing. I even cut this trigger out of wood, which, as it happens, looks like a nose. At the end of each syringe is a fitting, which includes a bleed port that we can cap off. This is far from a perfect representation of a hydraulic disc brake, as it's not sealed very well, only has one piston, and is filled with vegetable oil. But pull the nose, and the caliper moves. As you can see, there's a fair bit of air in this system. This calls for a bleed. To perform a bleed on any brake system, you need a bleed kit. Mine contains oil, two syringes, and a bleed block. First, we'll install the bleed block to keep the piston from moving. This will ensure we end up with the right amount of fluid in the system. Next, we'll fill our syringe with brake oil and take care to get all the air out by turning it upside down and letting the bubbles rise towards the opening. This is also an important step in a real bleed, since you don't want to pump more air into your brake system. To connect the syringe, we'll open the bleed port at the bottom. Notice how it doesn't leak all that much. The same thing happens if you fill a straw with water. If you open one end, the liquid pretty much stays put. But if you open both ends, it comes pouring out. The same is true for a hydraulic brake system. Only open one end at a time. Once we have our syringe connected, we can open the bleed port up top and connect another syringe to collect the excess fluid. Now we'll pump oil through the system. The excess oil flows into the syringe at the top, and so does a fair bit of air. You can see how pulling up on the top syringe creates negative pressure and forces bubbles out of nooks and crannies. Pulling the lever also forces bubbles out of the system. Theoretically, we could remove the lever or caliper from the bike and tilt it in different directions to let trapped air flow upwards. Positioning also matters on real bikes for more reasons than one. 
When we're satisfied, we can close up the system, one end at a time, and remove the bleed block. Now our brakes are working. There's not a big difference though because this system wasn't very refined in the first place. Like our model, real hydraulic brakes have bleed ports. They also tend to have nooks and crannies that can trap air. And pulling the lever is usually a step in real brake bleed procedures. To bleed my Magura MT5s, the process is actually very similar to our model. You pump fluid from the bottom to the top, flick the lever, and bubbles come out. There are quite a few other steps, but they're easy to understand. For instance, you need to remove the wheel and brake pads to prevent them from getting contaminated with oil. And like our model, bleed blocks are installed to keep the pistons located. On Shimano brakes, you pour oil into this funnel to displace air. On some Hope brakes, you take the whole top of the lever off and fill it up. In every case, there's a specific kind of oil and tool set required to complete the process. So if you want to try bleeding your own brakes, here are the steps. Step 1. Order a bleed kit specific to your brake model. If you don't know what bleed kit you need, there's this special online tool you can use to find it, called Google. The bleed kit will come with everything you need, including the right oil for your brakes. When you run out, you only need to buy more oil, as the rest of the stuff in the bleed kit will be reusable. Step 2. Get some additional supplies. Rubber gloves would be the first on the list since brake oil is nasty, and you want clean hands to reinstall your pads with. Rags are also useful, along with a spray bottle filled with water or alcohol. For any bleed, you'll also need basic shop tools. But if you're bleeding your own brakes, I assume you've already accumulated some torques and hex wrenches. So on to step 3. Find a tutorial specific to your brakes. Most manufacturers have these, but I'd actually steer you towards the ones done by shops and my friends at GMBN. These tutorials might seem overly detailed at first, but now that you know the basics, I think they'll make more sense. Watch your tutorial over a few times and make a cheat sheet of the steps if necessary. Finally, step four, attempt to bleed your brakes. You're gonna spill some brake fluid on the floor and fumble with the bleed screw. You might even screw the whole process up and need to start over. But once you learn how to bleed your brakes, you'll find that it's easy to do. Even better, you now know your system through and through. If the oil is old and discolored, you can do a flush and refill using pretty much the same steps as a bleed. Still, some of you might be thinking, this looks kind of messy. I'd rather pay a shop to do this. That's perfectly fine, and the good news is that it's not expensive. Even a complete flush and bleed on your front and rear brakes will be less than $50 and a quick touch-up can be way less than that. If it's just a lever bleed and it takes me 10 minutes, it's like 11.50. So the next time you get that spongy feeling in your levers, you know what the freak to do. Bleed your brakes or have a shop do it for you. I hope you found this video useful or at least entertaining. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and share it with someone who would find it useful. If you're ready to try bleeding your own brakes, I also left some resources in the description. Thanks for riding with me today and I'll see you next time.